live right hi um i thought i had this all sorted uh i thought i'd do the facebook live oh it's not going to be at the same time as doing periscope um and i knew i knew it was a big ask because i knew that that would be hard to get all set up which is why i'm sorry i'm a bit late Five minutes late, um, and I'm trying to set up Periscope still. Um, just trying to reverse the camera. Um, uh, so, just talk amongst yourselves. I will be with you shortly uh, while I do this. I guess once you've done it once, it gets much easier next time. And. I think I've caused a bit of um, oh, double cap. Excellent. On. Okay. I caused a bit of a few problems with um, what I'm doing today because um, I've said that I'm going to be doing it on Twitter and Facebook. I do it every um, month. I do a Q&A on Twitter and Facebook where people um, can ask questions. And that's obviously just normally on on the on uh, Twitter and just like you know I just type the questions but I thought oh because I've started this Facebook live now with the Facebook group which is <laughs> over here uh, I thought I'd do it on Periscope and, and do my Twitter Q&A at the same time um, which will come up over here um, but that means I'm looking at it's not so confusing when I move that uh, looking at two cameras and stuff um, and I think we've got a few people oh, straight in the tie, who have asked to be on the Facebook group. Um, and I think we've annoyed some people because we've said to them they've, it's for patients who've come to the clinic. So um, I'm sorry about that. Um, the Facebook group is for people who've been to the clinic. But today, this q and I'm doing um, on, on Periscope and uh, on Twitter. So... A little bit confusing. Um, so if there is anyone who has asked to join the group, and I think Laura might have got back to you and said, look, it's for people who've, who've been to the clinic, but uh, I'm very happy to answer questions on Twitter to anyone or Facebook on anyone. It's just I do a weekly um, q and I've just started it two, two weeks, I think I've done, to my um, private Facebook group for patients of the clinic. So that's... Um... <laughs> Hi, Serena. <laughs> Hi, Serena. Hi. Um, okay, got loads of questions. Brilliant. Loads of questions. But, but, but by, uh, by all means, um, ask questions. And I can see, Deborah, you're here. So I'm going to ask your one first because I've got a question from you. Uh, I'll try and answer all the questions that I've got. And uh, if anyone does ask questions, I try and answer them directly. I just go over the, a bit more detail when I do the live um, Q and A, for, mainly for other people. So um, Deborah's asked, "How likely is asymmetry after breast reduction?" Um, quite likely, is the answer. <laughs> Try and make it. I, or clearly, I'm always trying to make things perfect, and um, uh, I don't aim to make things asymmetrical. But what I would say is that everybody is asymmetrical. Everybody is asymmetrical. Every single person I see is asymmetrical. And that is the same whether it's your breasts, whether it's your eyes, whether it's your hands, um, whatever. You're, you, you've got asymmetries. Um, and um, when you do a breast reduction, I think, I think a lot of surgery, people perhaps perceive it to be more of a, um, more of a science or more of a... Um, more of a set clear thing than it actually really is and there is a lot of judgment in there um, you're dealing with tissues um, and you, you do things by eye we don't have something that measures the breasts we don't take a certain amount of volume off one breast and then or we can weigh it but we don't have a way of knowing exactly how much tissue we've taken off we obviously we weigh it as we go and we try and uh, 
well, I say we try and get about the same amount. We don't, I don't try and get the same amount because they're, of, they're always asymmetrical before. So I usually take a bit more off one than the other to try and balance the asymmetry and make the asymmetry better. Um, but I always warn people there may well still be asymmetries after breast reduction. It's the same with breast augmentation. Um, there may be some asymmetries, but what you're trying to do is make it within normal limits. And I, 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 you know, I've probably shown you photos in the clinic, and if you look, scrutinise the photos, you'll probably be able to see as some asymmetries, although they're usually um, mild, and they're usually within normal limit. And uh, <laughs> there's lots of breast reduction patients. Um, so, so yes, the, the asymmetry after breast reduction is common. It's very common in the early stages, and Teresa will tell you that, because uh, there's often swelling, and swelling can be more uh, on one side than the other, um, for whatever reason. Um, and it usually settles, and it's usually within normal limits. If it's not within normal limits, and one is bigger than the other, then um, I can do things like maybe a bit of liposuction or something to try and balance it up. But I'll say to you, they may still be asymmetrical, asymmetrical once I've done the liposuction, but I'm going to try and bring it within normal limits. But that's just the nature of surgery, and it's the nature of operating on tissues. Um, and that, that's, just, that's just what happens. Um, um, I've got a question from um, Janine here. Um, can't read my own writing. Breast augmentation sports. I think basically it's asking about when you do sports. Um, so I think you are not, I think you're pre op, Janine, aren't you? I don't think you've had surgery. So um, the surgery, you're in hospital either, either um, overnight or go home the same day. First week, you don't feel like doing much, I would say, um, but you're, you're mobile, you're around the house, you're doing stuff. Um, second week, you're getting back into things. If you work for yourself and you're doing stuff from home, you can do work from home and what have you. But I normally say most jobs, to sedentary jobs and, and, and driving and things, two weeks before you'll be doing those things. And after those two weeks, you can start getting back into gentle exercise, usually with your lower body, things like jog, oh, not jogging, um, uh, the step, the, the the exercise machine, walking, walking on the exercise machine and the bike, exercise bike. Uh, as you can see, I'm quite familiar with all the um, gym equipment. Um, um, so low impact stuff. The bike's good. The stepper is good, but not with your arms. Um, so lower body stuff is good after two weeks, four to six weeks before you're doing too much with your upper body, uh, just because you're going to make it swell. So if you do too much of your upper body, you make it swell. So and then after about a month, you can start getting back into things with your upper body. But just start getting back into it. See how it goes. If it's uncomfortable, then um, back off and uh, and don't uh, uh, don't don't do so much. So it just doesn't mean that four weeks you can go straight into it. But four weeks you can start getting back into stuff. Um, Sasha, I've got a question from Sasha here. Um, had implants done in June. They got infected. Uh, this was, it. where was it? P Poland, I think it was, or somewhere overseas. Had implants done overseas in June. They got infected, removed after a month in July. When can I have them replaced? Um, I think I think you said you're um, having... Um, I haven't met you, Sasha, I think, so I don't think you haven't been to the clinic, so... Um, you're on this one, you're on the periscope, <laughs> maybe, or maybe you, maybe not. But um, the answer to that is you have to wait for the tissues to settle. And so um, it's okay, it's okay. Um, you have to wait for things to settle. So I normally wait at least three months for things to settle. Um, Okay, Kate, I've made a note. There you go. I know I can scroll, but I will answer that question. Um, so at least three months for things to settle, the scar tissue to settle. Uh, and it's different with everybody. And uh, really, those that, that's something your surgeon will, should, should really guide you through. Um, but a minimum of three months uh, just to let the tissue settle. And then you can put the implants back in again. Um, but it depends on how the scar how the scar is going. I thought this would happen. We've got something on the online chat. Um, um, it depends on how the scar is going, um, and um, you really need to assess that on a sort of on a um, case by case basis. So really, you need to talk to your surgeon. Um, so um, perhaps doing the, all the Facebook Live and doing the uh, the um, Q and A on the Twitter and what have you is not a good idea. But um, 
you know, it's the first time doing it, so we live and learn, don't we? So um, we've got a query here, price for labiaplasty. Um, and that ties in, actually, with another question, which I haven't written down here, about eye. I haven't written it down. Eye surgery. Okay. Um, so one of the things uh, that I have chosen to do here at the clinic is um, I really just specialise, and I mainly do breast and body contouring. So um, um, we've got um, two surgeons here. We've got me and uh, Effie. And both of us um, um, specialise in breast and body contouring. We don't really do faces. Um, we don't do eyes. We don't do labiaplasty. Um, um, so the... I should have a copy of my book, shouldn't I? I've, <laughs> uh, I've, I've just written a book on about how to choose a surgeon. And I think a lot of plastic surgeons do... A lot of surgeons in general do a bit of everything. Um, they do faces, they do breast. What happens if the phone goes on in the middle of Facebook Live? God. Uh, they do hand surgery, um, burn surgery, you know. Um, and in the NHS, you're not allowed to do different types of surgery. If you're a burn surgeon, you do burns. If you're a hand surgeon, you do hands. If you're a breast surgeon, you do breasts. You, if you're a breast surgeon, you're not allowed to do faces. If you're a burn surgeon, you're not allowed to do breasts. But in the private sector, everybody does everything. Um, so that's one of the things we do here. We pretty much specialize in, in breast. And uh, so I don't do eye surgery. But the, the advice is if you want to find someone to do, to do your eyes, first thing, if you can find someone who's had surgery and is happy with it, that's always a good thing. Personal recommendation is, is a, good, um, a good start. The other thing you can do is um, talk to your GP. Your GP will probably know the local surgeons. One of the things about eyes, there are different types, types of surgeons that do it. There's plastic surgeons and there's also eye, eye um, um, eye surgeons, um, they're called oculoplastic surgeons, the, the eye doctors who, or eye surgeons who do um, uh, cosmetic eye surgery. So there's two different types and um, they're both fine uh, as long as they're fully qualified and can show you before and after photos of their cases, maybe speak to their patients and things like that. But I think um, uh, personal recommendation, talk to your GP, ring your local private hospital because the local private hospitals like Spire, BMI, you know, the big companies, uh, Nuffield, um, Ramsey, whatever your local hospital is, because only fully trained surgeons will be able to w work there. So um, that's what I would do if I wanted someone who to do my labiaplasty. Well, I if, if you want a labiaplasty or if you want eye surgery, that's how you find a, a proper qualified surgeon. But, um, but unfortunately, we don't do it here. Leads me on to another question from last week about the dietitian and do we have someone who is involved in... Um, uh, diet, dietary advice. Again, it would be a great thing to have here at the clinic to have someone who is involved in dietary advice, but we don't. And the problem is, it's hard for me to um, endorse other practitioners here because I don't. I don't. I, I'm trying to build the reputation, and so um, at the moment, um, you know, I, I, I've just got Effie here. I've got Paul Tully uh, in London, and it's just quite a, a small group, and it's just people I know. Um, but what I would say is that there's, um, we do have people here called weight medics who are involved in a weight loss, um, advice and, and help. Uh, they rent the room here. They rent, they rent the consulting space. So I can't really sort of endorse them. They don't really work for me. But, uh, but, but uh, the other thing I would say is there's a lot of people on the group who have the same problem. So I think, uh, and have been through things and have had now, uh, you know, work in that in that sphere. So you might be able to get some help from them. But uh, we don't have um, anyone here that works with um, dietary advice. But it's a good thing that maybe we could branch into if 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 that's if branching into things is a good thing to do. At the moment, I'm trying to niche it, so I'm just we're just doing breast and body contouring. Um, so Kate, I'll go to you now. Uh, is there a time scale where the breasts will soften after a lift and augmentation? Seven days post op, feeling quite firm and heavy, even though implants were only two two forty. I've got to say, a lift and a lift with augmentation is a big op, and it's got um, probably um, one of the biggest ops you can have to your breast, um, because a lift tightens all, all up, and then implants tighten it all up. So it's a big, it's a big deal. And uh, seven days post op is really early, um, and uh, things will feel very um, strange, tight. 
um, weird. The probably the probably shape the shape's probably a bit weird. I think you're coming to see Tish tomorrow, aren't you? Um, so I think the, the the shape will probably be a bit weird. So be prepared. Um, and things look strange and feel strange for a while, and they don't feel like yours um, for a while. And by a while, I mean um, after about a month or so. You know, hopefully the healing will be will have happened in the first week or two. The wounds will be healed, so hopefully you won't need any dressings after the first week or two. But then um, you've got um, the scarring and the shape to settle, and that takes a few months. Uh, the sensation, the breasts can feel firm, they can feel heavy, you can get weird sensations, and that takes a good few months. And I normally say to people things start to settle around three months. So you're really early on, and the main things that I'd focus on in the first week or the first weeks is getting all those wounds healed. Um, uh, that's, that's it, really, getting the wounds healed. And then, um, yeah, and then um, don't worry about the shape. Don't worry about the shape. Worry about, let it let the shape settle. And then six weeks, you know, eight weeks, then, then we will sort of see how you shape, how the shape's going. And and um, the, around three months, things start to settle. Six to 12 months for everything to really um, properly settle. But around three months, things will start to settle. So early days. So uh, we'll see how we get on um, with that. Um, We've got, uh, I've got a really good question here um, from Leslie on Twitter. It says, does surgery make people happier long term? Not sure, don't they generally have other, other issues? Um, this is something I hear a lot about cosmetic surgery um, and something I have to, well, I don't have to deal with, but I, um, I um, get involved with a lot. People saying, oh, you know, you shouldn't, it's un, you know, I've got other issues and you shouldn't, you shouldn't do the surgery because, you know, it's not, it's all in the mind or something, I don't know. Um, um, I'll go get back to you, Kate, in a minute. Um, so what I would say to that, you know, if someone says to me, oh, is, doesn't surgery, it doesn't make them happier long term um, because they've got other issues, you know, cosmetic surgery can't be lumped into one thing. Uh, it depends on what they've, it, it's surgery, it's a type of surgery. It's like saying, um, does, uh, does append, do people have their appendix out? Does it make, is that, you know, is it, does it make them better, you know, long term? Well, you know, it depends on why you're having your appendix out. Uh, and it depends on how it goes after the appendix has come out. You know, you do surgery for a reason to try and cure a problem. Now, it doesn't always cure that problem. Uh, and you can get complications after it, whatever surgery you have. But you do the surgery for a reason. And one of the things about cosmetic surgery um, is it's the, the, the di diagnosis is not a major part of uh, cosmetic and plastic surgery. Um, that's why you'll find that a lot of plastic surgeons have free consultations, um, whereas a lot of other surgeons, a lot of other doctors, you pay hundreds of pounds for consultations. Because if you've got chest pain, you don't know what's wrong with you you'll pay hundreds of pounds to go and see a cardiologist or a respiratory physician because you're worried there might be something going on inside and have to do all these tests and diagnose the problem. There's not a great deal of diagnosis in, um, in cosmetic surgery. It's like, oh, you know, I want my breasts or big or smaller, my nose to be bigger or smaller, or my um, mole to be removed or whatever the thing is. There's not, there's not that much diagnosis there. Um, Um, but what you've got to, there is always an emotional aspect to the, um, to the, to the problem. And, uh, what we've got to try and do is try and do, find out, uh, whether the, the emotional aspect is significant enough to need treatment, um, or addressing, maybe not treatment's not the right word. Um, um, and, um, and see whether the addressing the physical thing is the right thing to do or not. Uh, now, if you address the physical thing, there might still be emotional things and there might be, still be other things there. But I think it'd be wrong to say that uh, people who are see seeking cosmetic surgery don't need to have the physical thing addressed. I think there's a, there's a uh, perception that they've all, everybody having cosmetic surgery has got, uh, it looks totally normal and um, it's, they're wrong to, to, to seek treatment. But if you look at the people who have cosmetic surgery, um, they're often out of proportion. And they, they you know, they have, they, 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 
they've got very um, worthy concerns and, and which can be helped with surgery. And the surgery's got a very low complication rate. So um, no, I don't agree that it's, uh, it doesn't make people happy a long term because they've all got other issues. I think it does make people happy a long term. I think you'll always get people who aren't and you'll always get people who have, uh, have, who have got other problems and maybe surgery wasn't right for them. Um, and that's unfortunate. That's something we are always trying to avoid because we don't want people to be unhappy. Um, but it, if you look at all the sort of operations you can do, including appendicitis and uh, coronary bypass grafting and hip replacement and um, hernias, you know, when you look at patient satisfaction rates post-operatively and co improvement in quality of life, cosmetic surgery is right up there. And it really does significantly improve um, quality of life. So, um, yeah, so in answer to the question, I think they, there, there may be other emotional issues and that's something we need to uh, look at and address. But um, nevertheless, I think the physical aspects can significantly improve not only the physical um, appearance, but, it, but it also the emotional side of things. Because often I see people who, have, who want breast implants and have a, have, have wear a padded bra and they say they want to look the same as how they look with a padded bra on. You could say, well, they could just carry on with a padded bra. But it's how they feel and they don't want to carry on with a padded bra and they feel much better, even though to everybody else looking, they wouldn't know they've had surgery because they used to wear a padded bra and they don't anymore. And so, um, but it, it really, I see it all the time. It, it does really improve uh, people's self-esteem and it, and it really does help people. So um, I think that's a media myth, that, that one. Um, so, sorry, uh, Kate, I'm gonna scroll. Is it normal to get back ache after and then Paula I had backache after breast augmentation it was quite painful Paula have you still got it when you say it was quite painful um because um, it's a while ago since you had surgery Paula isn't it um certainly a week after surgery um I think backache is not unusual because you have first off you've been on the operating table and Kate you've had a lift with implants which takes a while like I don't know how long it would have taken, but two and a half, three hours, maybe more. You know, it's, it's a, not a short operation and you're lying on an operating table in a certain position for all that time. And then when you start, when you're recovering, you don't, you're not moving about quite as well. Um, and so it's, 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 it's usual to not have a normal posture and it's usual to get back pain and back aches simply because of the mechanical effect of lying in a position. Um, I don't, I must say, I don't often see people with backache because of breast implants, although Paula <laughs> has put a comment below saying she's got it, but I, I don't see it very often. Maybe maybe it happens and I don't see it. I think that's because I don't tend to use huge implants and um, 240 cc's is not a, oh no, I don't anymore, that's good. <laughs> um, 240 cc's is not a huge volume of implants, so I don't think I would be thinking, oh, long-term you're gonna have problems. It's not like people have like a, you know, people who have thousand CCs or you know big really big implants and you could think well that's going to unbalance their their frame I think a 240cc implant is not going to cause a significant strain on your on your um, on your spine and your posture so I wouldn't think that's going to be a long-term problem but um, certainly short term very usual to get um, um, to get problems like that um, Jenny awesome thank you uh, for saying nice things yeah, self. -con I mean, that's what it's all about. It's all about improving um, self self confidence, and I think um, you can do that by addressing the physical um, aspect of things. And I and I think it's just unfortunate that the media has a portrayal of someone who's who's, who's got huge boobs who wants even bigger boobs, or someone who want who doesn't need cosmetic surgery. Because I think a lot of people out there probably are having cosmetic surgery. You may not need it, but um, certainly most plastic surgeons are trying to do. You know, we're, we're plastic surgeons and we come from a, you're welcome, Kate. Um, we've come from a background of, um, of uh, cosmetic reconstructive surgery. You know, we, 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 we do breast reconstruction. We do reconstruction of other parts of the body. That's what we're about. We're about to restore, restoring form and function. And that can mean after uh, trauma, um, like a car accident, but it can also mean after a developmental, you know, if you are, if your body is out of proportion, then you can restore um, form in that way. And I think um, that's that's what most of us are trying to achieve rather than achieve the media uh, um, portrayal of it whenever you see it on the um, um, on the TV. <laughs> Lots of people joining now. I'm running out of questions now. I thought I had loads, but um, 
Um, d- uh, dietitian, can you go back? Uh, yeah. JJ out. Uh, questions? Anyone? <laughs> I didn't tell you how long it, it says there. My connection is weak. I don't know how that is portraying on the um, Facebook Live. I think my Periscope is good, but my my Facebook Live is weak. Um, right, so I'm out. Um, I'm off to Brussels tomorrow at a meeting uh, for the rest of the week. Um, so I won't see you, Kate, tomorrow. So I hope um, all goes well with Tish. Um, and um, back next week. Um, so I'll probably be doing it Monday, I think, or, or Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday next week. Um, Painkillers, that's fine after all. Thanks, Paula. Thanks for clarifying that, Paula, because it did initially look like you <laughs> you were saying, oh, I've got back pain with implants. As I say, I don't often get uh, problems with back pain with implants, although certainly in the early stages you, you might get it. And uh, yeah, painkillers is good. Things like ibuprofen, paracetamol, regular. So, Kate, this is for you. Regular ibuprofen, I think. Um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is good to take with food. And then paracetamol as and when. There are stronger ones like Cogo, Codamol and things like that. But be careful with those. I don't know what painkillers you've been given from the hospital, but be careful with the codeine type ones because they can constipate you and they can make you feel a bit dizzy and a bit lightheaded um, and they can make you feel sick. So they're good painkillers. If you're in a lot of pain, then by all means take them. But um, I like ibuprofen and paracetamol. But you should probably go with what Effie said, actually, rather than what I've said. So um, Effie will help you out with those painkillers. And Tish. Tish will um, help you with that. Right. So... Thank you. Right, I'm going to sign off. And what I'll do is I'll maybe um, look at next week, uh, Monday, Tuesday. And uh, thank you very much for your participation. Any questions, uh, email Laura or uh, put it on the Facebook or whatever. Put it on Twitter, anywhere. Just put, put, we'll pick it up. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you next time which will be week today or six days today monday tuesday i'm going to try i'll do it right it's probably good if i do it regular i'll put a post about this should i do it regularly i can like do it maybe monday i think generally monday is good for me what is it today tuesday today isn't it yeah so monday's generally good to me i'm usually operating tuesday but i'm not operating now clearly because i've um, finished early but anyway uh see you next week have a lovely week and um What's that? That's good. Right. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off of 